I simulated an Asian battle royale where I put every nation on the continent against one another until only one remained. Just like previous royales, nations will have the chance to form alliances and start rebellions at random points in the video. But now countries will also be able to form historic empires after conquering enough of their neighbors. And let's just say the result was not what I was expecting. Alright, we'll be starting with a war. The first nation to attack is Iraq. I see we're off to a great start with Saddam already coming back to power. And this time he'll be going after Syria. Well, at least he's learned from his mistakes in Kuwait deciding not to go after them this time. But will he win though? Let's find out. And he will not. Iraq really cannot catch a break. You know, these past few decades have been so bad for Iraq that I kind of feel bad for them. Like Iraq went after Iran and that didn't go very well. Then they went after Kuwait and that went even worse. And now for a third time going after Syria? I guess Saddam never learns. Next up, another war, where we'll see Oman fighting with the United Arab Emirates. Why am I not surprised that the Middle East is where all the conflict is breaking out? Well, let's see what happens. And it looks like Oman will be our first winner. Despite their economy being five times the size of Oman's, it seems the UAE stood no chance against the mighty Omani forces. This now makes Oman the home of the world's tallest building. Now it's a war between China, making their first move, and one of these 15 countries. And that country will be Mongolia. I see they're trying to stop Genghis Khan in his tracks before it's too late. Or perhaps this could just be the start of the Neo-Mongol Empire. And China loses. Boys, Genghis is back. It seems like the dreams of a new Qin dynasty have already been snatched away. But in their demise, we have the return of the Great Khan. But honestly, why am I actually just not surprised? If China was to fall to anyone, it would be the Mongols. But but now it seems like we'll be having our first alliance. And it'll be between Malaysia and India. Interesting. Not exactly an alliance that I was expecting. But to be fair, this is definitely something I could see happening in real life. But as it stands, the new Indo-Malaysian alliance is our first of the Royale. And it seems we have back-to-back -back alliances. This time though, it'll be between Singapore and Armenia. Okay, this one is interesting. Like, don't get me wrong, I completely understand why Singapore decided to make an alliance right after India allied with their neighbor, but why with Armenia out of all nations? Like, I don't know if you know this, guys, but there's a bit of distance between you two. But you know what? An alliance is an alliance I won't judge. Next up, a war between Tajikistan and Afghanistan. Tajikistan, I don't know if attacking the nation literally known as the Graveyard of Empires is really the best decision. But who knows? Maybe it'll work out for them. Nah, it did not work out for them. I mean, Tajikistan, you can't say I didn't warn you. The British failed, the Russians failed, the Americans failed, and now Tajikistan will be added to that list. All right, now it's South Korea attacking either North Korea or Japan. I have to include maritime borders here because if I didn't, Japan would just win by default since literally nobody could attack them. But it looks like that doesn't matter anyways because South Korea will be starting up the Korean War again. This is like what? Our, our fifth nation in and if this was real life, we probably already started a nuclear war at this point. But fortunately, that isn't the case. So let's find out which Korea is best Korea. And it appears that title will be going to the south. It took 70 years, but Korea is finally whole again. And you may think this is the end for old Kim, but fear not. You see, he actually managed to make a deal with the south where he would become the director of their newly formed nuclear weapons program. But other than that, I think this is the perfect time to establish our first formable nation. For the first time in over a hundred years, say hello to a united Korea. And North Korea has been integrated as a core territory of the this new nation, which unfortunately for the North means that they will not be coming back. All right, next to war with Cambodia fighting their neighbors in Vietnam. As an American, I'm already getting flashbacks, but never mind that. Let's find out what'll happen. And it seems like Cambodia will not be winning this one. But I mean, if we're pretending this is the 1970s, Cambodia wasn't really the best place at the time. But I mean, to be fair, I guess pretty much no
nowhere in Indochina was really that great at the time. But let's be honest, anything's better than Pol Pot. But now at least Vietnam is only one nation away from being able to form Indochina. Next up is a war between Bangladesh and India. Considering the fact that India is in an alliance and Bangladesh is not, I don't really suspect this is going to go too well for them. Since it's two nations against one, the odds are not in Bangladesh's favor. But who knows, maybe they can pull out a miracle. Yeah, that makes sense. I think you guys can see now why it's so important that nations get an alliance as soon as possible. Because if they don't, they have the chance of getting mopped up by the nations that are in alliances. Alright, the nation of Bahrain will be fighting Saudi Arabia. For reference, this is Bahrain. And this is Saudi Arabia. But of course, real world logic doesn't apply here, so anything can happen. Or maybe real world logic does apply here because they lost. I mean, yeah, that just, just makes a lot of sense, actually. Even though I do kind of think Bahrain is a little underrated, it really wouldn't make sense if they took out Saudi Arabia. You know, honestly, so far, nothing too out of the ordinary has happened. Other than, you know, Mongolia taking over all of China. And, uh, Singapore allying with, uh... Armenia. But I mean, realistically, it could be a lot worse. Hopefully I'm not jinxing myself here. And now it seems like we'll be having our first nation to rebel. And the nation returning is the United Arab Emirates. And of course, the first rebellion would obviously be happening in the Middle East. I expected nothing less. But I guess congrats to the United Arab Emirates for being our first nation to return. All right, apparently a another rebellion. And of, of course, Bahrain is coming back. Yeah, obviously another Middle Eastern nation would be the the one to rebel. That sounds about right. All right, but hopefully this is where the Middle Eastern rebellion trend stops, though. Because instead, we're getting an alliance where we'll be having Nepal aligned with Brunei. All right, seriously, though, what is with these random Southeast Asian nations aligned with countries that don't even have a coastline? Like, on a strategic level, this does make a lot of sense with both Nepal and Brunei allying themselves against the Indo-Malaysian alliance. But like, on a realistic level, how is this gonna work? But to be fair, realism was thrown out the window the second Mongolia took over all of China. So let's just keep moving. Now it's Thailand versus Laos. And it looks like Laos will be taking this one. At this point, I've learned to always expect the unexpected. And it looks like they'll be fighting with Vietnam over control of Indochina. That'll be interesting to see. Though I am a tad bit surprised the Russians haven't done anything yet. They're biding their time. And that scares me. But anyways, time for a war between Brunei and, uh, well, Malaysia. But this is actually very interesting because this means we'll see our first war between alliances. And as it's a winner-take-all system, one of these two factions is going down. But since both of the alliances have two members, it will be an even fight. Insane. And the Indo-Malaysian alliance loses against the Brunei-Nepal alliance. This now means that Nepal will be taking all of India, and Brunei will be taking all of Malaysia. The continent's balance of powers has now been completely turned on its head. Both India and Malaysia are no more. India especially being gone is a major development. But you never know, there's always the chance they could come back. Speaking of coming back, we have a rebellion. No way. That is crazy. That is actually crazy. Well, speak of the devil. Yeah, India did not let that slide. On the bright side for Nepal though, they get to keep Bangladesh so they technically have a coastline now. But so that's, that's absolutely wild. And now it's time for an alliance between the United Arab Emirates and Palestine. All right, good. We're getting back to more realistic scenarios. Two Arab nations allying with each other makes perfect sense. And finally, a normal development. Next, it's war between Lebanon and Israel. Look, I know I said I wanted it to be a little more realistic, but not that realistic. And, um... Lebanon loses. For legal reasons, I have nothing to say about this. This is certainly a development. Truly something has just occurred. How curious. That's, um, that's all I have to say. Moving on. Next, it's Jordan. I don't like where this is going. Oh my god. Against Israel. Because of course it's Israel. <sighs> okay, let's just, let's just, let's just spin the wheel. And Jordan wins it. Once again, this is certainly a development. For some reason, I just have absolutely nothing to say about this. It's like any meaningful commentary is just escaping my brain for some reason. How strange. But now it's time for a war between Qatar and, um, 
but Bahrain. We really just aren't leaving the Middle East, are we? And they lose. I suppose second time is the charm for Bahrain. Next is Georgia <sighs> against Russia. You know, I would have thought that Russia would have been the attacker, but yeah, whatever. Georgia, w w what did you expect, guys? What did you expect? But even so, this development does mean that the Russians are now on the prowl. Okay, next, Bahrain again, going against the only nation they border, Saudi Arabia. It's rematch time. Bahrain may have lost the first time, but they're out for vengeance. They're 0-2, guys. 0-2. I was rooting for you guys. You literally had a second chance. You came back from the dead. You took out Qatar, and you still managed to lose for the second time to Saudi Arabia. Ren, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. But now it's alliance time, and it'll be between Korea, and Korea will be allying with Bhutan. All right, I, um, I see the trend of allying with landlocked nations only continues. You know, maybe there's something super strategic about ally nations that are thousands of miles away from you, but I'm just not seeing it. I see we're just on a roll of the alliances now, and it's gonna be Turkmenistan and Syria. You know, honestly, this is actually a pretty fair alliance. They're not that far away from each other. I think they could probably coordinate a little bit here. So yeah, probably the most normal ish alliance we've gotten so far. Next we have a war where we'll see the UAE against Saudi Arabia. And even though Saudi Arabia is a lot larger than the UAE, remember they have an alliance with Palestine. So this one will actually be in the UAE's favor. Let's find out what happens. And looks like they do it. They take out the giant of Arabia. Unfortunately, the Saudis victory against Bahrain was short lived as they're now being conquered by the United Arab Emirates. And this means that the UAE is probably now the world's largest producer of oil by far. Also, I do want to mention that the Maldives are on this map. They just have been quietly waiting. It's always the quiet ones, isn't it? Next up, Kuwait versus Syria. And Syria is in an alliance with Turkmenistan, but unfortunately for Kuwait, they were gonna have to fight an alliance either way. But Kuwait does not care because they just won. Is it just me or is Kuwait just built different? They seem to always be on the winning sides of things. First it was against Iraq, now this. And yes, they do take control of Turkmenistan because if one member of the alliance loses, all of them lose. Whether they border them or not, it doesn't matter. The higher they are, the harder they fall. All right, now it's Kazakhstan against Uzbekistan. I see they're aiming for control of all of Central Asia, but it looks like that will not be working out for them. I mean, on the bright side, you escaped being conquered by Russia, but on the uh, not so bright side, you still got conquered by Uzbekistan. Next, Afghanistan. Uh-oh. Going at it with Pakistan. The war of the stands continue. And surprisingly, Afghanistan actually loses. Yeah loses. Come on, let's not kid ourselves here. We know they're gonna come back. But anyways, the number of stands is slowly dwindling. With only three remaining, I think we could soon be seeing the formation of Stanistan. How glorious that would be. Okay, a rebellion. We haven't had one of those in a minute. And the nation returning is... No way. Bahrain? Hey, I have to give it to them. These guys do not give up. Like, to be honest, I don't even know how to feel. I'm both shocked as well as filled with awe and respect for Bahrain for coming back so many times. Bahrain I have to respect the grind. I'll give you that. And we're back to wars. This time we'll see Nepal's alliance. Ooh, they'll be fighting against Mongolia. Yes, Mongolia is at a disadvantage here, but it's the Mongols, guys. Look, I'm not expecting them to win, but I would not be surprised if they did. And the winner is Nepal. You know, I never thought I would ever be talking about Nepal taking down a Neo-Mongolian empire, but here we are. And even though they won, I wouldn't say this is a good thing necessarily for Nepal. Because now they border a lot more nations, which means they have a lot higher of a chance of being attacked. But if Nepal keeps doing as well as they've done so far, I think they actually have a legitimate shot of winning it all. We'll see though. Next, a rebellion. Returning this time is... is... Um, is Israel. Very interesting, another development. Guys, is it just me or is the map changing. This is truly one of the changes of all time. All right, now we have the Uzbeks challenging the Russians. Very risky move, Uzbekistan, but it may pay off for you. And in fact, it does. Uzbekistan has taken out Russia. Wait, are you guys telling me you've never heard about the Uzbek march on Moscow? It seems now that two great powers have formed on this continent, Uzbekistan and 
Nepal. Not something I thought I would be saying today, but I guess life is just full of surprises. Time for conflict between, ooh, India against Nepal. This could either be the solidification of Nepal's hegemony or a complete uproar. Still, it's a bit interesting that India didn't go after Pakistan, but I suppose Nepal is probably the bigger threat right now. And India has done it. They've won. They've taken down Nepal. What a momentous moment for the continent. India in one fell swoop have taken out both Nepal and Brunei. India, despite all the odds, despite not having an alliance, despite already having been eliminated, came back, took down Nepal, and now owns a third of the continent. They're truly the underdog of this game right now. And while that is very impressive, what's even more impressive is the Philippines and Indonesia's inability to do anything. Like, while all of their neighbors have been going ham, they've just been chilling. If they stand so incredibly still for long enough, they could actually make it out on top. Same goes for the Turks as well, oddly enough. Like, I was honestly expecting Turkey to be the one on the prowl right now, but they're just uncharacteristically inactive. Perhaps that'll change soon, we'll see. Next, it's Jordan against the UAE. Yeah, this is not looking very good for Jordan, and like I expected, they've lost. On the bright side, though, Palestine finally gets to see some expansion. No longer are are they trapped in the West Bank? Now it's a war between Palestine. Apparently, they've decided they're going on the offensive now. The offensive against, um, yikes. Man, what an interesting, um, unfriendly confrontation between, uh, these two nations in the western half of the Asian continent. Let's find out the outcome. Oh my god, bro. <laughs> Um, you know, sometimes the best solution to your problems is silence. I want to reiterate, this is a uh, game. Simulation, not real. I am separating myself from all blame for any of this. You see, guys, um, the IS doesn't stand for Israel. It actually stands for inter... G Galactic Slovenia. You see, you see, the Slovenians just came back from the moon and they decided that this would be their perfect landing space. Can we all agree on that, guys? Okay, cool. And I um, almost forgot that the intergalactic Slovenians also conquered the United Arab Emirates. Okay, moving on. Uh, okay, another war. Hopefully a normal war this time. Oh, oh, g g great. Maldives, I have never been so happy to see the Maldives. And it's them against um, India. All right, I think it's pretty obvious who's gonna win this one. There's no way that India is gonna lose to the Maldives. Are you kidding me? I don't know what to say right now. All right, so India, the most populous nation in the world, the largest nation on this map, just got conquered by a nation who's not even gonna be on the map in 30 years. You know, right about now, I really need something normal to happen. Well, to anyone who lives in the red area, Area. Say hello to your new Maldivian overlords. How do we get here? I'm not joking when I say this. This is the most cursed map yet. Please, just a normal war. Oh, 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 Taiwan? Taiwan, okay. Surely, just a normal outcome. The Philippines. In an ideal world, the Philippines will defeat Taiwan, okay? That's what's gonna happen. My sanity depends on it. For once in my life, I am actually begging that the Philippines wins this. Oh my god, I'm going insane, bro. Well, it seems that the uh, the Philippines has lost to Taiwan. That's it, that, that's all I have to say. Rebellion, great. Who will get independence? W would you look at that? Cambodia, something normal happened for once. This is a momentous moment. I am so happy for you, Cambodia. Thank you for finally taking us back to reality. I think this is the start of something new, something better. I feel like we're finally back on track. Okay, great. War. And it's a war with the Japanese. Uzbekistan, okay. And they, they, they lose to Uzbekistan. You know, honestly? Okay, that makes sense. I respect it. I respect it. This actually makes perfect sense. Uzbekistan, the nation that owns half of the continent conquering Japan. That makes sense. I like this. This is good. You know, right now, I think Uzbekistan is probably my favorite nation. Have I ever said how much I love Uzbekistan? It's just such a great place. You know, shout out to all the people from Uzbekistan. You guys are amazing. You've made my day. All right, next war will be Kyrgyzstan against the Maldives. And the Maldives. Say goodbye to the Maldives. I don't know about you guys, but I for one welcome our new Kyrgyz overlords. Or should I say the new Stan World Order? Okay, next up, an alliance between 
Turkey finally doing something, and Cyprus. Alright, so just real life, I guess. You know, something's telling me that Turkey's probably gonna be carrying the alliance a little bit, but hey, I'm sure Cyprus is trying their best. Alright, time for war between Yemen, and look at that, our good Slovenian friends. Ah, but unfortunately for them, it looks like Yemen has won. It seems like their little venture on Earth just wasn't meant to be. But this now means that Yemen is the clear frontrunner for uniting Arabia, and though I doubt defeating Oman will be much of a challenge, you have to remember Bahrain is still here. You better watch out. Yemen. Next it's Uzbekistan against Azerbaijan. And since Uzbekistan is pretty much the Soviet Union at this point, we know they're going after their oil fields. And they will succeed. That's right boys, the Armenia-Azerbaijan conflict has ended. It's just that Uzbekistan was the one to do it. Okay, next up, Vietnam, who technically has exactly the same borders as they started with since they lost Cambodia, challenging the great and mighty Kyrgyzstan. Bold move, Vietnam. Bold move. And they win it! I guess losing Cambodia was all part of their master plan. After thousands of years of fighting with them, the Vietnamese have finally conquered China. But we seem to now be having another returning nation. And that nation will be Malaysia. And yet another nation gets independence from Vietnam. Next is a war between Iran and Pakistan. If Pakistan gets out, that means we will only have one stand remaining. And our winner will be Pakistan. I knew the stands wouldn't be going down that easily. It seems like the nations in the Middle East are really starting to consolidate a little bit. A new alliance? Okay, Armenia. Since Armenia is already in an alliance, whichever nation is picked next will just join theirs. So no matter what happens, we'll have our first three-nation alliance. Obviously. Obviously it's Bahrain. How do these guys manage to find a way to win in every situation? The fact that they're in a three-nation alliance pretty much guarantees their safety till we get to the final few. Like a cockroach, they never die. But now we're back to another war. It's gonna be Laos versus Vietnam. So I'm pretty much expecting Laos to win because no nation has been able to hold both India and China for more than maybe two turns. Yep, exactly what I thought. And now Laos inherits the curse of owning this much land. Like I said, it's pretty risky to get too big too early on. I will genuinely be shocked if Laos lasts maybe another five rounds. Alright, next, it's Taiwan challenging Uzbekistan. And Taiwan's able to do that because they technically have a maritime time border with them in the southern islands of Japan. But of course, no one stands a chance against Uzbekistan. You should have seen this coming, Taiwan. But now it looks like Uzbekistan is pretty much just trying to navally blockade everyone on the Pacific coast. Next, more alliances. There is no way. Are you telling me Bahrain is about to get a four-nation alliance? Someone please explain to me, what is it about this place? What is so great about Bahrain? I know I said at the beginning of the video, oh yeah, I think Bahrain's kind of underrated. I changed my mind. Okay, let's see who joins them. And it looks like Pakistan's joined the team. So now this is basically just a Middle Eastern alliance plus Singapore. And I was really out here doubting Singapore's alliance with Armenia at the beginning of the video. Who knew that allying with Armenia would be the ticket to victory? But at the same time, if someone does beat them, that's four nations out at once. Now it's a conflict between Yemen. Oh no. They're going against Bahrain. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> it's, it's over for you. For reference, this is what their probability of winning looks like. They are not winning. This was not a good idea, Yemen. I feel like Bahrain's just like the, the mafia boss of Asia now. Bahrain and their cronies are just sweeping through the Middle East now. And I'm pretty sure I can confidently say that they will be the ones forming Arabia. But before they're able to do that, it's time for a rebellion. What? At this point, Arabia's just never getting formed. I really have to stop jinxing myself. So I'm just gonna use reverse psychology and say Arabia is not gonna get formed. And considering the fact we're having another rebellion, I don't think the reverse psychology thing worked. Surely it won't be a Middle Eastern nation. Surely. Okay, I guess Japan's not a Middle Eastern nation. Though Korea should be very worried right now. Next up, Bahrain. I'm so sorry for whoever they're attacking. Deciding to go after Oman this time around. Let's not waste any time. We already know how this is gonna go. Wait. Wait, what? You're telling me Oman just completely wiped out the largest alliance in this game. Four nations, and they just defeated them like that. Oman, you did it. You took out Bahrain, you took out Pakistan, you took out Armenia, you even took out Singapore. No longer do we have to deal with the Bahrainian Mafia. I know I've said it many times before, but this time for real, Oman will be the one to form Arabia. All right, the next war is going to be Cyprus and... Oman. The game's really trying to make me look stupid, isn't it? And since they're allied with Turkey, they have a higher probability of winning. Look, I know this may seem bad for Oman, but I believe in Oman. They will win. No, they're... they're... 
They're, they're not gonna win. Okay, but actually, 100% this time, Cyprus will be the one forming Arabia. There is no chance that they don't. All right, an alliance between Bhutan, and since they're allied with Korea, they'll actually be adding someone to their alliance. That'll be Kuwait. Interesting. Very interesting. I know the wheel's trying to mess with me here, but fortunately, you don't need any territory that Kuwait owns to form Arabia. Yemen is truthfully all that is left. Now it's a conflict where Laos will be attacking Bhutan. Is a 3v1 really the best move, Laos? I mean, perhaps it could be. We see what happened with Oman, but I'm just saying it's not the most probable. I should have known. You know, I really shouldn't have forgotten that the least probable outcome in this game is always the most probable outcome. All right, next war is going to be Malaysia battling it out with Indonesia. Look at that. They're finally doing something. It only took 500 years, but Indonesia has finally woken up and they woke up specifically for the purpose of defeating Malaysia. You know, honestly, that sounds about right. Okay, next, the rebellion from Palestine. And that is completely fine because Palestine is not in Arabia. All right, next, Laos against Cambodia. Guys, do you know what this means? Finally, no matter what, someone is going to form Indochina. But let's see who that'll be. And it's gonna be Laos. You know, honestly, I'm proud of Laos. Despite bordering almost every nation on the map now, they've still managed to pull through time after time. Say hello to Indochina. Okay, it's Uzbekistan versus Indonesia. They really are going for the most unconventional expansions. And it looks like Indonesia has taken down Uzbekistan. Like, I want to be surprised, but nothing surprises me anymore. Indonesia just took over all of Russia. And also this means that, unfortunately, all the stands are gone. But even more importantly, we're now down to our final 10 nations. All right, this time it's East Timor. I swear, if East Timor, the nation that has just been camping the entire royale, the king of doing nothing, conquers all all of this? I won't even know what to say, to be honest. Fortunately, though, that is not gonna happen. But you know what, East Timor? I have to give it up to you for lasting this long. All right, rebellion time. And would you look at that? Korea is returning. And yes, Kim is still the director of their nuclear weapons program. Now for another war, where Indonesia will be going after Korea, I guess. I guess Indonesia really does not want Korea around. Wow, yeah, Indonesia won. Okay, Korea's return did not last long. Indonesia was not having any of it. This time, it's the Japanese who are forced to fight Indonesia because that's the only nation they border. Apparently Japan wants revenge for Korea? Who would have thought? But unfortunately it's not gonna happen. And just like that Indonesia has taken down both Korea and Japan, making the Pacific Coast entirely theirs. And for the first time in a while we're finally getting an alliance. Okay, Indochina is gonna be going with Myanmar. Alright, this is a fair alliance. I suppose they felt threatened by the Turkish Cypriot alliance and decided that they needed to team up. Next war is gonna be Myanmar. So here's the thing, they don't actually border anyone they're not allied with. So we're just gonna roll again for this one. All right, so Turkey is going to be attacking Indonesia. If Turkey actually manages to take down Indonesia, it's gonna be insane. And they actually have the advantage as well. And Turkey pulls through. This means that all of this is now Turkish. Remember when I said earlier in the video that I knew Turkey was gonna do something? This is what I was talking about. And as you can see, we really don't have that many nations left. We're now officially in the final stretch. All right, next war will be the Turks going on the offensive once again. And believe it or not, despite owning all of this land, the only nation they actually border is Indochina. And there goes Indochina. And not just Indochina, Myanmar too. And despite how it looks, there are still five nations left on this map. Sri Lanka, Yemen, Cyprus, Palestine, and of course, Turkey. And despite all of this, Arabia still has not formed. But I do believe that Turkey has reclaimed enough core Ottoman territories to call themselves as such. The Ottoman Empire is back. And just for aesthetic purposes, I'm gonna change them and their alliances color to a more traditionally Ottoman color. Our next war will be between Palestine and the Ottoman Cyprus Alliance. And it appears they will not be the ones to defeat them. Sorry, Palestine, you had a good run, but this is it. And it seems it's time for perhaps our final rebellion. And we are going to see a return from Bahrain. Not once, not twice, but thrice you have returned. No matter how much you want to, there is no chance you are winning this. Next up will be Bahrain. Of course it's Bahrain. Against the Ottoman Cyprus Alliance. Bahrain, I'm happy to say it's time you get out for the third time. No. No, 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 no. Genuinely, how do they keep getting away with this? Bahrain, I take back every good thing I've ever said about you. You are my least favorite nation. Time for perhaps our second to last war. And surprise, surprise, Bahrain is going on the offensive. It's either Sri Lanka or Yemen, and it's gonna be Yemen. This is it. 
It's finally over. I will finally be free of Bahrain. Oh. You know, I really didn't think today would be the day that I would be beefing with some random country. But here we are. Congratulations, Bahrain. You did it. You formed Arabia. And here we have it, the finale. And would you look at that. Bahrain is gonna be our final attacker. Let's not waste any more time. We all know who's gonna win. Wait. Wait. Oh, Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka did it. Sri Lanka, despite, despite everything, despite doing nothing, actually nothing, genuinely nothing, this entire royale took down the great evil that plagued this continent, Bahrain, once and for all. Sri Lanka, you have saved us. You have saved us all. You stood so incredibly still this entire game that you ended up winning it all. I am proud to say, on this day, we have seen the creation of the greatest Sri Lankan empire. You alone stood against the tyranny of Bahrain, and we thank you. Okay, all jokes aside, I have I don't have anything against Bahrain. Let's, let's be real here. But this was really fun. And seriously, I really hope you guys all enjoyed. And if you did, I've actually made a few other battle royales just like this one. The links for those are in the description if you're interested. And if you guys are interested in seeing more videos like this, feel free to like the video and let me know in the comments. Anyways, as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you then.